Dale Reynolds Gaming, racing excellence. Well, hello everybody, my name is Dale Rounds and I sincerely thank you all very much once again for coming out for another NASCAR 2004 The Rookie Championship Career Season Mode Challenge where we'll be doing race number 26 and 36 in this video, the Chevy Rock and Roll 400 from the Richmond International Raceway. In the last video, we smoked them. Cake House Paint Scheme, started on the pole, won the race by like 12 seconds at Darlington, smoked the field and buffing our stats even more for this already overkill and already pointless to the point where we're just beating the dead horse of trying to win the championship in rookie career mode here in NASCAR Thunder 2004. So, gameplay settings once again, legend difficulty, 10% race length, and driving assists are off. Showing you guys the sponsorships here, so once again, catching you all up. 100 happiness on all my sponsors, and they're all 93 prestige. My crew guys are all 100% happiness, and they're all about mid 60s rated we got one race left on the engine bodies and chassis that are being overhauled and we got one race left on the body forming tools so still got the points lead it's like almost 300 points over dale jarrett going into richmond it's getting the nut cut in time we're getting towards the end of the season now getting towards the end of the season that's for sure a big shout out and a big thank you once again to dancing Nady gamer 2003 for this paint scheme he wanted me to call the car turtles so that's the name of the car is turtles but this is dancing Nady gamers Final paint scheme appearance here in this playthrough. It is the again the angles red, the kind of off orange a little bit, and black for the uh, bottom part of the there with the skinny numbers, the white and the blue outline. So once again, a big shout out and a big thank you to Dancing Eddie Gamer for his four paint schemes here. We're gonna try and do this, get himself another win here, and it is a Ford Taurus chassis, so I technically. Can't really be all that happy if I win because it's Chevy Rock and Roll 400 and what if I win and it's a Ford? Just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. Sorry. <laughs> anyway, so without further ado, caught you all back up. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen, going racing, going to Richmond. Car rating for those of you who are playing along and want to uh, pay attention, the car rating is a 61. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Redneck Jesus is on the pole. Let me show you guys the car setup that we'll be using here for Richmond. Slightly different than what we ran in the spring, but very slightly. For the most part, the same setup. Again, manual transmission, 20 PSI on the tire pressure. That is still the same. 75 inches on the front fender flare, 70 degrees on the rear spoiler. The suspension is slightly different. I ran a 40-40 in the spring. This time, it's a 40% on the front springs, 38% on the rear springs, and a negative 0.5 on the wedge. Bringing those rear springs down two, clips, two clicks just helps kind of tighten the car up a little bit, especially coming out of turn number two, where you tend to get very, very loose. Uh, it helps prevent that. So that's the only other change, and the gear ratio is a preset four. So um, pretty simple, pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Please let me know if you like that setup. Try it out for yourself. If you're playing along with me, I welcome you to do so and use that setup. I'm gonna go qualifying here at Richmond. Car was pretty hooked up right there. Let's see what we get on lap number one. Hole on lap number one, but I'll show you guys this second lap so that uh, you guys kind of know how I'm driving this thing here. Checking up early going into turn three. Car's hooked to that bottom, like it. Nice drive off the corner, and the final time, 20.70 with the pow! Once again, bleh, bleh, yeah, why? Look at that, beat him by about seven tenths of a second. I'm not changing it, car felt really good. Dancing Any Gamer, final race for his paint scheme in this playthrough. Let's see if we can get you another win here, Dancing Yeti. Go racing at Richmond. The 83 car leads in points so far this season. You know, I'll tell you, consistency is the key to the NASCAR Winston Cup Championship. If he can remain focused on that, he has a good shot at winning. Gentlemen, start your engine. 
43 wins to Cup Engines fire here at Richmond, and how about that? It's the Dale, Dale, and Dale show, apparently. Look at that. Three Dales in the top three positions, and all other non-Dales need not apply. <laughs> Dancing in a gamer scheme on the pole with redneck Jesus to the outside and Dale Jarrett behind. Let's see if we can actually win this Richmond race. Hopefully we don't get beat by Tony Stewart this time. Go racing here at Richmond. Good start so far. We're going to lead lap number one. All right. Dale Jarrett looking to the inside. There's another fast forward. Can't quite get it hooked up off of turn two. Damn, Dale Jarrett's going to snag this lead. Damn. I don't remember the last time I got passed for the lead like this. Holy shit. I'll put my mirror on for you guys here as I try to track Dale Jarrett back down here at Richmond. Nice slide off of turn two. That's exactly what I was trying to avoid by dropping the rear springs a couple of clicks, trying to make it just so that it's tightened up a little bit on the exit of these corners here, but... Wow, Dale Jarrett's got a really stout Ford Taurus here as he is taking the lead and is starting to push some distance on me. Junior is starting to look for the inside. I don't know what's uh, so different this time around. But, uh, yeah, just lost second to Dale Earnhardt Jr. I don't know what's so different this time around. I thought I was pretty fast here in the spring, but... Uh, I don't know, it looks like that uh, Jarrett and Junior and Three Dales, the Three Amigos, or the Three Amigos are <laughs> up here in the front. There we go, we took the second spot back from Dale Earnhardt Jr., a.k.a. Redneck Jesus, Redneck Jesus. And we're back up to second here, let me see if my car gets good on a long run, and maybe I could track Dale Jarrett down. Seemed to have settled out here a little bit, settled into second. Junior's just a couple tenths off, he hasn't really made much of a move on me. Um, but Dale Jarrett is pulling away from me just a little bit at a time, just about a tenth a lap or so. So Dale Jarrett's got a very fast forward here tonight here at Richmond so far. I'm going to do what I can to hold this second place down and maybe make a wedge adjustment here coming up to the pit stop. Little by little, just pulling away from Redneck Jesus. The gap has stayed at about 2.1 between myself and Dale Jarrett, so we're running identical times, but I am pulling away from Dale Jr. just a little bit, as I can see lap cars already, 14 laps in. Just hitting my marks, trying to drive the car good, and um, clobber the fucking wall off of turn four. Yeah, that's, that's fantastic. Awesome. Anyway, um, yeah, about that. I was hoping I could stay ahead of Junior here. Let me see if I can try to get this uh, get the spot back from him real quick. But that hurt trying to catch Dale Jarrett. Car is a little tight coming off the corners. I might want to make that wedge adjustment again on that pit on this pit stop here. Maybe drop the wedge a half around. Oh, Mark Martin! Little contact. Saved it though. Mark Martin trying to get underneath me, and I'm just going to kind of pinch him a little bit. Yeah, right front tire is starting to really wear out here. Starting to fade quite a bit here. Car starting to really tighten up. Can't really get into the corners or get that center bite. Really think I should have left those rear springs alone and kept them at that 40-40 split, but I don't know. You win some and you lose some. I felt like I needed to make that adjustment, um, you know, that helped tighten it up because for whatever reason, I was really loose coming off of these corners, so I really wanted to, you know, tighten it up a little bit. That's why I made that change, but apparently I should have just kept it the way it was. I fucking overdrove turn three like a dipshit running to Jeff Gordon. Yeah. Leaders are pitting. I think it's Jarrett. Yep, just Jarrett. Just Dale Jarrett this time around. I will be pitting this time, and I'm going to be dropping some dropping the wedge on this thing. It's going to make me pretty loose on the short run, but I'm hoping that it'll really come to me and make the car better on the long run. 
I will be pitting this time. So, oh, so will Gordon. Okay, apparently not. Sorry, Gordon. Shit, my bad. <laughs> All right, um, on pit lane, dropping the wedge a half a round. Let's, uh, let's do this. Good stuff, 15-9. Why am I not going? Go! What are you doing? Go! The fuck, man? Really? I hate that. I hate that. Fucking go. Don't wait on anybody. I don't give a fuck if you hit them. The fuck, man? Hate that. Lost fucking more time on pit road than anything else on the fucking stop itself. I stopped. I sat there. Fucking waiting for Ward fucking Burton of all fucking people. The fuck? I'm fucking still mad about that. Car is driving great, by the way. Um, the wedge adjustment really is helping, but I really, 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 really lost so much time just waiting on Ward Burton to get out of his fucking box, apparently, that I don't know where I don't know where I'm gonna land once once uh, pit cycles actually truly finished because the fucking leader of this race is still out there still hasn't hit oh dale jarrett up in smoke championship implications is dale op jarrett blowing up here at richmond oh boy wow and the one time that i'm having a little bit of an off race in the past little bit dale jarrett second place in points up in smoke Wow, I would really love for this fucking leader to actually pit here and see where I can see where I land. Bill Elliott's in front of me; he's the next for position. Car is a little bit free. You can see right there coming off the corner, um, but it is driving better. I just really got to. I think I'm just overdriving it right now because I'm so fucking mad that I lost all that time on pit road. I'm gonna try and get around Billy here. And I will sweep up to the top five. That leader is finally fucking pit. Finally. Fucking way later than anybody ever should. <laughs> now, at least if you want to be competitive. So that leader came out of pit lane ahead of me. Ahead of me. That's how much time I lost on pit road by just sitting there. Waiting for somebody to give me a green light so I can go, because apparently we needed one of those one of those guys. Apparently we needed a traffic director sitting there to tell me when I was good to go and when I was not good to go, like terrible. After the pit sequence, 30 laps in, P5. Joni Mitchell, get the fuck out of my way. Seriously, dude. Why are you fucking blocking me? I am in the top five. You're a fucking lap down. I am full of salt in this race because I just... Terrible. I mean, I know it's a fifth place and I know it's a good run so far, but goddamn. I was leading. And I'm used to winning. <laughs> Especially in this career mode playthrough. Oh, well. Shit happens sometimes. Grab a shovel. A few inches later. I've been trying to catch up to Dale Jr. the past five laps or so. I've been catching him slowly, steadily, but not going to be enough. White flag is out. One more lap to go here at Richmond. And I got fucking Hermie Sadler trying to unlap himself from me. Dude, I'm not even the leader. I'm not even the leader. Why are you fucking racing me? I definitely should have left the springs at that 40 at the uh, the 40 40 split instead of changing them because the wedge is making the car made the car drive better the wedge changed but I only needed like half of that Good job, everyone. came home fifth not bad I really can't complain but it just really really sucks when you lose all that fucking time on pit road Jeff Gordon, Mark Barn, Tony Stewart, Red Knight, Jesus, and yours truly in the top race. five. Yep. All right, Jeff Gordon's a negative 20. That's because I accidentally kept him from pitting. I think that's the reason what happened. He ended up winning the damn race somehow. Yeah, I think that's the reason why he didn't pit till like lap 30 is because I kept him from pitting when he wanted to pit. So 
That was my fault. Well, whatever. Casey Muir's a negative 10. Ricky Rudd's a 14. And Kyle Petty is now nothing to me, really. Um, $8.21 million after Richmond. More EA Sports bio accomplishments. Yay. All right. Checking the points after Richmond. And it's going to shake up big time. Look at that. 415 points. We gained 116 points on Dale Jarrett due to his engine failure. 26 starts, 19 falls, 11 wins, 20 top fives, and 23 top tens. Dale Jarrett is in second, Redneck Jesus in third, Jeff Gordon in fourth, and Tony Stewart in fifth. With Ryan Newman, Mark Martin, Bobby Labonte, Kevin Harvick, and Ricky Rudd rounding out the top ten after Richmond. Check it up on sponsorship here. So still 93 Prestige on Advance Auto and 92, 92 on Coca-Cola and Outback. Team is all still at 100 happiness. That is fantastic. And in garage, that's right. Engines, bodies, and chassis being are done being done overhauled. So we get fresh fit equipment for New Hampshire. And you see that we're gonna overhaul that tire wear. Tire wear is gonna improve just a little bit on that chassis. And then for the bo uh, engine, excuse me, you see the efficiency is definitely going up there. So we'll overhaul that into the engine. And then in the body, you'll see that we're getting a, getting a good amount of overhaul there. We're going to gain a little downforce and gain some drafting ability as well. That's fantastic. Overhaul that for two races. And we have nothing on the shop additions. The body forming tools is done. So we're going to go over here to chassis. We're going to add the shock dyno. This is going to allow us to get chassis tire grip plus 10, and this is going to take six races, and it's going to cost me $1.5 million. So we'll purchase that shock dyno. That's an expensive-ass shock dyno, but it's something that's definitely needed for sure. So it's, it's kind of sad to think that it's going to take six races for that to get done. It's going to be almost pointless at that point because it's going to be the end of the season, so almost going to be pointless, but eh, whatever. We're trying to improve as much as we can, right? So, once again, a big thank you and a big shout out to Dancing Yeti Gamer. I am sorry we couldn't come away with the win in your final paint scheme race here at Richmond. Um, but a good top five, a good, good character building race. I guess you want to say that. A good top five finish. Um, do apologize we can't get the win, but that's still got a good finish for you. Hopefully you enjoyed that there, Dancing Yeti Gamer. And I hope you guys all enjoyed that too. Thank you for welcoming me into your lights for another video here. My name is Dale Reynolds. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully this brightens up your day. Hopefully you send some positive vibes your way. Thank you very much for watching. If you like what you saw, please be sure to like, share, comment, subscribe. Hit the bell next subscribe button. This way you get notified anytime I put up a NASCAR Thunder 2004 video or another video in that case. In this rookie championship career mode playthrough where we make the impossible possible and fantasy becomes reality. That's right. Be safe, have fun, I'll see you guys in the next video, which will be taking place at the Sylvania 300 from New Hampshire Motor Speedway. I'm going home. Yeah, be safe, have fun, I'll see you guys in the next video. I'm out of here, guys. Deuces.